Hi guys, welcome to the channel. In this video I'm going to be revisiting a kit which I started a long time ago, back in August last year. And that's the European House Kit from Core Models. If you saw my previous two videos you'll know that I built up the kit in the first video and painted and did some basic weathering on it in the second video. And left it something like this. Well, while I was building and painting that kit, I also built a base for it, and in this video I'm going to show you how I did that. The first thing I did was mark out the base on some pink XPS foam. I wanted the house with a road going next to it, a raised road on one side, and a kind of um, stream or canal on another side. Normally I wouldn't put objects in a diorama parallel to the edges, but in this particular case I think it worked okay. To achieve the depth for the canal I used three sheets of the XPS foam on top of each other and cut down to produce the canal. I lined the wall with separate pieces of foam so that it would be easier to carve the bricks. A quick trick to smooth out circular holes like this drainage hole here is to wrap some sandpaper around a pencil. I used a ruler to mark out the cobblestones and then tried to sink the centre cobblestone slightly below the rest as that would be the centre of the canal. To make the stones look more worn and less square and neat, I used a variety of tools. A classic trick here is the rolled ball of kitchen foil. As you roll it over the foam, it gives a nice random texture. I prefer primer in rattle cans, but the propellant in that will melt foam, so instead I use some black artist acrylic paints. Two pieces of wood provided a floor for the house and were also really useful as a positioning guide. These 3D printed bollards and this spot uh, brass chain would be really useful for the fence that goes alongside the canal. Sculptor mould was used both to model the uh, grass bank at the side of the canal and as an adhesive to hold the wall in place. This was my first build after I got my 3D printer, so I was keen to try a few different objects out. Here we've got a bed which will go in the attic and the tree stump which will go in the garden. I use my favourite AK dry ground acrylic texture 
to give some texture to the garden area. A bit like the sculptor mold that can also be used as an adhesive, so I pushed the tree trunk in there while it was still wet. Small stones were stuck to the base in the same way. Once the entire base had been covered with the artist's acrylic paint, I gave a light, random airbrushing of a light grey over all of the stonework. This provided something of a shadow coat. Then I picked out individual stones with various modelling paints. These are mostly Vallejo model colour. The trick is to try to get lots of variation and not have too many stones the same colour. Very fine sand was then sprinkled over all of the cobblestones, brushed into the gaps. And it was fixed in place using some of this sand and ballast freeze from VMS. This wet mud enamel from MIG was used on the grassy bank at the side of the canal and on the garden next to the house. I wanted a sort of classic 1940s advertising sign on the side of the house, so I printed out a few possibilities, a couple of different sizes, and I settled upon this one here. I suppose I could have glued the paper directly to the model, but I wanted to try a different approach. So I painted the background red. I then placed some Tamiya masking sheet over the top of the printout. and with a very sharp knife cut around the letters to give me a stencil. At this point I did wimp out and I decided not to use the, uh, the small slogan below but only use the big letters. The centers of the B and the R's obviously needed something to attach them. And once it was all cut out, this is how the stencil looked. This was first taped onto the building and shot with blue paint, which forms the backdrop of the letters. The gaps in the B and the R were filled later. The stencil was then shifted very slightly down and to the right. This would provide the offset and by spraying white through the top, we get the offset letters like so.
Moving back to the walls which I painted last time, I tried using oil paint to imitate mortar. Because of the high surface area of the bricks and the, uh, the foam, that didn't really work very well. It made cleanup quite difficult and didn't really give the effect I was looking for. However, I did find more success with oils on weathering the building. I used a few colours including dark mud, industrial earth and some shadow brown, all from Abtidong 502. These were used in various ways, sometimes applied dry and blended in, other times more thinly. The goal here was just to break up the uh, overall consistency of the paint job, to make it look lived in and worn. I really just went with the flow here to be honest. I tended to use darker colours down on the brickwork near the ground where it might be uh, damp and, and a bit mouldy. I did a bit of a dot filter on the walls. And quite a light wash on some areas too. One colour which I thought was quite effective was the green. I tended to blend this dry without thinners keeping it mainly to the bottom of the building. I thought the colour added a nice bit of uh, variation there. The roof tiles had been painted last time but they weren't weathered to simulate sort of moss and lichen and bird droppings and everything else I flicked on, splattered on some white grey acrylic paints. I went quite heavily with this because it would be toned down later. By adding PVA glue in certain areas it was possible to attach some blended turf. That acts as moss which is accumulated on the roof. I used some watered down acrylic paint to colour the moth slightly. Finally there was some moss splattering done with some green acrylic paint and with some yellow. And the final look there, I think you'd agree, looks quite weathered and uh, somewhat older than it did initially. Once the enamels were dry on the base, the house was fixed into position and then came the task of painting the individual stones on the garden path. Some 4mm and some 7mm static grass were used for the garden area. So initially a thick layer of PVA glue was added. And then the 4mm grass. Some glue on top. 
trying to break the surface tension. Followed by some 7mm grass which was placed by hand rather than using the static grass applicator. This looks quite strange at the moment but when you invert the scene, shake off the excess grass and bring it back it looks okay. Some grass was also added on the cobblestones for the road, as well as the embankment next to the canal. Finally some of this Cato brand grass, which is quite long, was collected in bunches and added in a few places to simulate some longer weeds and plants. These are the 3D printed objects which I made earlier. This door was found in an old mini art ruined building box. It had to be cut down slightly because it's rather large. It was given a basic base coat of blue and then chipped with some brown paint to represent wear and tear. Similarly this barrel and this milk churn were found in a mini art accessories kit and they were painted and given a wash. European earth pigment was used to try to simulate collected dirt at the side of the road. To be honest this didn't really have the effect that I wanted. It was quite useful for putting on very lightly over the stones and almost providing like a, a highlight there. But as an accumulation of mud at the side of the road it didn't really have the effect I wanted at all. Sepia oil paint mixed with odorless thinner was added to some of the recesses between the cobblestones and although the effect is subtle you can tell the difference, it seems to deepen those gaps and those shadows. The 3D printer was fired up again to produce some roof tiles. This was a free download from Thingiverse. The great thing about 3D printers is that it is only the height of the print which determines the um, print time. So here if I print one tile or I print 16 tiles, the print time will be the same because they're all the same height. This took less than an hour to print if I remember correctly. Once the tiles were broken free from the supports, they were attached using a strip of styrene and this will form the roof of the wall next to the canal. After an initial coat of black I painted them with various mixes of yellow, red, brown and uh, sort of tanny buff colours. I then went through the same speckling technique that I used on the house roof. One thing I've done here which you might not be able to tell immediately is I've tried to blend in the grass and the building and the road and everything by giving a very light coat of XF52 mixed with XF19, that's flat earth and a light grey colour. 
that acts like a dust coat over everything. It blends things together like I said, and it also takes the shininess off that static grass which I think makes it look a lot better. Then it was time to pour the water. For that I used this realistic water from Woodland Scenics. You can only pour it one eighth of an inch or a few millimetres deep at a time. So I dammed off the end with some masking tape and poured the first layer. It's supposed to take 24 hours to dry, but I find it takes a bit longer than that. I certainly leave it longer than that before I add the next layer. It's also possible to colour the realistic water with a drop of acrylic paint. You've got to be careful not to add too much. Once a couple of layers had dried, I added this US jerry can, which I thought would look nice floating in the river. And of course, because it's on top of some hardened layers already, it looks like it's floating. This gloss gel was used to add a small ripple effect on top of the water. Nothing major, no big waves like on my um, helicopter diorama I did recently. Just something to break the surface up. Then just as I thought I was finished, I watched the video that was uploaded by Andy's Hobby Headquarters this week and I was really inspired by the vegetation he included there and I thought well I'll try to include some myself. I took this green polyfiber that I've had for a while, tried to manipulate it into an appropriate shape and I used that in conjunction with this green scatter which has got a really nice shape and it looks like small leaves. The polyfiber was soaked in PVA glue mixed with water. Here I'm adding it with a pipette, but eventually I just dunked the polyfiber in the mix of glue and water. And then generously sprinkle on the scatter. I did this multiple times, going across the top, turning it over, collecting the excess scatter, sprinkling it back on again. At some points I had to tease the uh, polyfiber apart which exposed new areas of glue so I scattered some more scatter on top of that making sure basically you've got a really thorough covering. For the flowers I wanted to use this purple foliage material from Woodland Scenics. I also have the red However, when I opened the purple, I realized I had the wrong material and it's almost like a, a polyfiber material itself. So I couldn't use the purple for this job. Instead, I lightly scattered the red all across the plant. Obviously not as heavy as the green. And I think that started to look fairly decent. I was quite pleased with the results on this one. So with that the model was basically finished and the challenge of photographing it came along. It's quite a funny shaped model, it's quite difficult to photograph, but I did my best so let's have a look at the final result.
So guys, that was my build of the European house building and then the addition of my own uh, diorama base for it. I had a lot of fun building this kit. It was uh, a good opportunity to try some new diorama techniques. The building kit itself is very basic, as I said in the last video, but I had a lot of fun building it. I think it's a, it's a good opportunity there. It's a good canvas for trying various different techniques. Of course, the obvious problem now is what to use this diorama for. I do have a few ideas. Uh, one option was to have it as a, a sort of a, a town in Dunkirk and have some French soldiers uh, holding the line perhaps as uh, the rest of the forces uh, retreat towards Dunkirk. Another option was to have it as some kind of resupply uh, area, so maybe some either Germans or Americans uh, resting, maybe having a truck on the, the road at the top or the road down the bottom, maybe loading or unloading from that. Um, and a few other options as well. That could be uh, early war for the, for the Germans or it could be late war for Germans or Americans. There are of course a few improvements I could make to the diorama. I'm not super happy with the, uh, the attic space and how it seems quite clean considering half the roof of this building has been blown off. I've also in my making of this made the roads perhaps a little bit too narrow and uh, that does limit the vehicles that I'll be able to put on there if I'm going to put any vehicles on there. But overall, I had a lot of fun building this, and that's the most important thing. I also learned a lot, which will help me in my future dioramas. And I hope you enjoyed watching the video too. It just remains for me to say thank you to my Patreon supporters. You can see their names on the screen now. These guys provide invaluable support to the channel every month, and it's hugely appreciated. Thank you very much, guys. I really enjoy uh, posting my updates to my Patreon page. Um, and getting opinions from my Patreons and uh, discussing various modelling uh, questions with them. So thank you guys for being part of that community. I also have to say thank you once again to Scale Models HQ, who supplied the building that I used in this video. And a reminder that if you go to their website, you can get a 10% discount by using the code MN10, that's MN for Model Nerd, 10, and you apply that code at checkout. So that's another big project that's been around my workbench for quite a few months now, and it's done, which is excellent. Of course, my big ongoing project at the moment is the Dora. That's going to have at least another couple of videos to, uh, until it's finished. I've also got one more kit, which I started a long time ago, again, August, September time, and I hadn't even painted it in that video, and that is the Ram Tiger. I have finished painting it now, I have got a diorama base almost finished for it now and that will be one of my next videos in the next month or so. I've also got one more model kit in progress for that little series I was talking about before. What are models from Company X like? You remember that I built the Kingfisher from AZ Models recently. I'm in the process of building something from PM Models, which is a small company from Turkey. And then maybe Maybe finally, before the middle of the year, I will actually get around to starting one of the kits which I posted in my January the 1st video where I told you the things which will be coming up in 2022. So uh, hopefully before the middle of the year I will have started something on my list for the year. Anyway guys, that's enough waffling on from me for now. Thank you again for watching this video, well done if you got this far. I hope to see you in a future video. And until then, take care and have fun modelling.